So I'm working up some color blends for a customer and I thought I'd show you how I'm gonna go about doing it. Okay, so I have a customer who's asked me to work up some samples in a yellow, in a blue, and in a red. And we narrowed it down to using mason stains and mixing it in with two different bases. So this setup right here is to test um, a five tile blend of each of these colors in, uh, in two different bases. But let me show you just kind of how I laid it out here so you can see what I'm doing. So hopefully you can make sense of this. I have two different reds that I'm going to blend in one, two, three, four, five different tests. And then here are my two different blues and the two yellows. But normally, I don't do it this way. And I want to show you what's up. I'm going to be mixing these colors into a, a pre-mixed glaze, into a liquid glaze. So when I, I need to decide how much am I going to assume is dry goods inside of, say, 100 grams of wet test. So I'll take a, a gloss base number two, for example. We'll get 100 grams of it. Uh, in terms of figuring out how much dye to put in, or stain rather, um, I'm shooting for probably 12% as a minimum in dry weight. So, I'm actually being a little aggressive here. I'm going to assume 50 grams dry, which means at a 20% rate, I should be putting 10 grams in per batch. So, I had to make an assumption, but once you know how much you're going to add to your wet liquid, then the question is just 0, 25, 50, 75, and 100% and how that works out. But I did it a little bit different. And this test right here, and this test right here, where it's just 100% of each of these two colors, 100% lobster, 100% coral red. And once I make that mix up, I'm limited in the amount of gloss I'm going to use. Oh, I have this small bottle. I've got to be really conservative. I can't make 500 gram jars. I don't have enough. I do have one of the bases I'm using, but not of the second. So uh, maybe on the first base, I would just make five jars at 100 grams and then add the right ratios. But I want to reuse this jar once I've uh, dunked my tile. So to get to a 7525, I need to add 3.33 grams of the lobster to what I already had in this jar. But that would mean that the total stain amount is overall higher, right? It's a higher percentage overall than this one, and so it might look different just because there's more stain for the same 100 grams. So I need to account for that. So I'm going to add 33 grams more of the base so that I have a 75-25, and that way I get a whole nother test, and I didn't need to use a 100 gram jar I can go ahead and just add 33 and a little bit more and I get both of these tests. So this is how I lay out the colorants and this is all for one base. So I'm going to do this once with the uh, mixing clear and then I'm going to do it a second time with a semi-translucent base. Okay, so I have my gloss base number two mixed up here. I've already done this once, I wanted to show you. That's kind of how I check to see if it's thick or thin enough, just how nicely does it coat. That looks like a good coat to me. So that's what we're gonna write down is our specific gravity. And to do that, I'm just gonna fill this 50 milliliter cup up and we'll weigh it. Write that weight down so we can do it again later. Now there is a little inaccuracy there, I'll give you. There is a little bit of a bulge to the glaze. I don't like it to bulge too much, but it would be more accurate if I had a lid that I could push down firmly on it, like, like the pros use, but we'll call that good. I'll write that weight down. Okay. So if you're curious, the weight on that was 89.4, and the cup weighs 15.5. So the difference between those two times two is my specific gravity. Next, what I wanna do is I'm gonna use my stopwatch here and I'm gonna time how long this takes to empty. 
So we're we'll just going to bring it right to the the top. I'll hit start. Okay. 11.8 seconds. I'll write that down. And those two things will make sure that we can get pretty close next time. Okay, so these three are going to get dumped into those jars. These are going to get dumped into this. And then these are going to get dumped into this. And I'm going to mix all nine jars up and we're going to Take a dunk of each and then we're going to add some more to the three outer edges. But first, these nine. So I used the immersion blender and I've gone ahead and blended up each of the nine. So let me get these nine dunked and then we're going to add some more in. I wanted to point out that I, I use an underglazed pencil and I have these laid out. So I have yellow one through five, blue one through five, and red one through five, all with uh, GBT ref. So far we've made these, we've made the middle ones, and we've made the far ones, and I'll get those dunked right now. Now it's time to get these next ones done. Okay, I'm looking for 33, and I really don't want to overshoot it. Boom. So, there they are. All 15. I can't wait to see what they look like in the morning. Well, it's next morning, and as normal, I'm in the kitchen inspecting what happened in the firing last night. These are pure of one color, these are pure of the other color, and then we have the blend in between. And I'm not sure you're going to be able to see, or maybe that's my point, there is just almost no difference in these. Now the reds, not super happy with the reds, it looks more, looks more salmon-y than I wanted. And you can see, I mean it's definitely a different color, the two extremes when it comes to the red. But these are the two extremes in the blue. Man, I mean, maybe there's a difference. Maybe. Here are the two extremes on the yellow. I mean, a little bit. This looks a little lighter. This looks a little more golden. But the differences are subtle. So even between extremes, it's almost hard to tell the difference. This is almost... I don't know. There's more of a progression in the red. But that's how it turned out. Did do uh, the others, I would call them GB2. This is just a clear. But what I did confirm was that the clear does not have any particular color shift. I wanted to make sure, for example, that these uh, didn't look totally different in a different base. And the color integrity was the same. So I did a couple yellows and just some scrap pieces in the red. I won't show those, but um, I did do it in both bases and there was no difference. This went on kind of thin, so I'm not really happy. I put it on thin, you can still see kind of the texture. I don't know, but it had no color advantage. So I'm just gonna set these aside. I'm gonna do a quick video to my customer explaining how to look at these and then we'll put them in a box and we'll mail them off.